Welcome to this presentation on MLA citations. I'm Patricia Morris, Coordinator of Library Research at the Florida Gateway College Library. This video is Part 3 on how to do MLA citations 8th edition. We're going to use the MLA template to create works cited entries for a variety of resource types. Citation styles have a lot of rules, but remember that the number one rule is to always follow your instructor's directions, even if they differ from the formats given here. In part two of this video series, we looked at each of the MLA core elements shown on the left and rules and variations for them. Now we're going to use the MLA template shown on the right to organize the information from our research and create the entries for our works cited list. I've saved, saved this template as an Excel file on the library website, and you can keep it handy as a guide to organizing your information with the correct format and punctuation. Please note that in this presentation, we're not looking at how to do research, but at creating MLA works cited entries for resources we've already found and used. Let's start by citing a book that we've read as research for our assignment about the rediscovery of King Richard III's burial site. We've used information from this book, The King's Grave. Although this is the cover of the book, we always want to take our information not from the cover, but from the title page and the back of the title page, which is called the verso. Here we find the title and subtitle, the author's names, the publisher, and on the right, the copyright date that we'll use for the publication date. Using our template and the title page and verso, we fill in the information following the rules and punctuation of MLA Style 8th edition. It's a good practice when you fill out the template to include correct capitalization, punctuation, and other formatting details. The notes on the right side refer to style formatting covered in Part 2 of this video series. You can refer back to that for detailed explanations of the MLA core elements. Then we can create our entry in works cited form, double spacing and indenting by one half inch the second and third lines. Now here, because we're citing the entire book, we don't need to include page numbers. If we were citing only part of the book, we would include that information as the location element, so we would show the page numbers 30 to 52. In our next example, we're using an article from a print magazine on Twitter and the future of the news industry. Here's the issue of Smithsonian Magazine that contains the article. On the left, we have the magazine's table of contents page that shows the magazine's date and volume and issue numbers. On the right is the first page of the article. We have the article title, Tweet All About It, the author Clive Thompson, and we see the beginning page number 43, which then continues until page 47. We can enter the information into our template. And here is our works cited entry. An article in a print periodical is pretty straightforward. In our third example, we're searching for articles about Civil War diaries for a paper. We've identified an online article after doing a search in the library catalog, and we're going to click Read Article to view it. Remember that you have to be logged into the library website with your student ID and eight-digit birthday to access online database resources. Here's the beginning of the article. Let's talk about titles for a minute because we have three titles going on. We have the article title, the journal title, and the database title. The article title, Preserving Civil War Diaries, would be the title of source it's the most specific, detailed name for our resource. Going one step larger, the article is found in the journal Social Education, so that is Container 1. We find other information about the container, such as volume and issue number, the publication date, and the page number. All of this is in the database Academic 1 file, which would be Container 2. For the container location, we can either pick up the URL at the top or select it as the bookmark, whichever is shorter or more useful in locating the article. So we fill all this out in our template, 
all this information from the previous screen that we've identified. And here is our entry. Again, pay attention to details such as what you put in quotation marks, what's in italics, and proper punctuation. So here's our entry for an article published in a journal and accessed from an online database. But let's go back for a second. I noticed that on the article page it gave a website address for the journal Social Education from the National Council for the Social Studies. And with a little further investigation, I found that the art article is freely available there. Instead of using the URL from within Academic One file, which is rather long, I could provide the URL for the article found here. Here are both entries, and both would be correct. In our fourth example, we're going to cite a database article that has a DOI. We found an article on Frank Lloyd Wright's architectural creation, Falling Water. Here's the detail page of the article in the database education source. Let's go down the core elements list and see if you can identify the elements. First is the author. That's number one. Number two is the title of source which would be the article title. Number three is container one, that would be the journal title. Number four is other contributors, and we don't have other contributors. Number five is version, that would be if this was a revised edition or second edition, so we don't have that. Number six, number, that refers to the volume and issue number, which we find here. Number seven is publisher, and publisher names are omitted for periodicals, so we can skip that. Number eight is the publication date, which is given here. And number nine is the location, and that refers to the page numbers. So all of that is for container one. We also have to list container two, the database title, education source, and the location. So this article has a DOI, which stands for Digital Object Identifier, and is a unique alphanumeric string assigned by the publisher. When a DOI is given, it is preferred to use that instead of a URL. Now you may find a lot of other numbers on this page. There's an ISSN and an accession number. Only use the DOI. If it's not there, use the URL. We enter everything into proper format in our template. Now note the DOI at the bottom in the location position. You, you write it out as small letters DOI, then a colon, then the alphanumeric string with a period at the end. And you use it all to enter your works cited entry. In our next example, we're using an ebook on finding a career. I've already found and read this ebook called Second Chance, How Career Changers Can Find a Great Job. I'm going to open up the PDF full text and look at the title page to get my information. Here, again, I can identify the author, Mary E. Galani, the title of the ebook, which is my title of source, and then going down through the template list, I enter information under Container 1. That would include the publisher Prager, and on the next page I have the publication date of 2010. So here's my template, and the ebook is found in the database called ebook collection, so I'm going to enter that as container 2 title and put the permalink URL as the location. And here's my entry for an ebook from a database. Our final example is information taken from a website. Staying with our career topic, we're using the Occupational Outlook Handbook website for our research. Here's the page for my chosen career topic, Elementary Teacher. I can find many elements here. 
For a government author, author, you list the name of the government first, then the name of the department and agency. So we're going to have United States, Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics as the author. The title of source is my career, which is given here as kindergarten and elementary school teachers. Next is the title of the website, Occupational Outlook Handbook, which is the container. We can get the edition and the publication date from the bottom of the page. Now they've provided a suggested citation, but it's not formatted in MLA style, so I can use the information given, such as the edition given here, but I'm not going to pick up the citation because it's not correct for the style that I'm using. We've entered all of our information into the template. Because this is one web page that is part of a larger website, we put the title of source, our career title, in quotation marks. The title of the container, the Occupational Outlook Handbook, is in italics. In our Works Cited Entry for Documenting Research from the Occupational Outlook Handbook website looks like this. We've looked at six examples of applying the MLA citation style from the 8th edition to resources of varying formats and complexity, and we've talked about a lot of rules. You're not expected to memorize all of the rules for MLA style, but you do need to be aware that there are specific and proper ways to document your research. The MLA Handbook 8th edition will provide more explanations and examples, and you can always ask for help in the library. Here's a sample works cited page using today's examples. This page is double spaced using a readable font such as Times New Roman in size 12 and is alphabetical by author. In this three part video series we've covered a lot of information. If you have any questions about any part of it please contact me Patricia Morris in the library. We hope this presentation has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching and good luck.